Have you ever wondered about why you spend the way you spend? There have been moments in my life I questioned the very reason why I was spending on the things I said I wanted and reflecting back on those purchases, I realized neither were they wanted or needed. I realized how wasteful that was in terms of spending the hard-earned cash I earned exchanging my time for a paycheck. In this article, we're going to dive deep into the psychology of spending, how to spend on your values. Are you ready to master your finances and live your best life? Welcome to the Live Financially Well podcast. This is the audio version of the Frugal Blog with your hosts, Jason Vitug. Let's start reading. Do you know about the psychology of spending? Dr. Brad Klontz, author and founder of the Financial Psychology Institute and one of our dear social media friends, says there are factors that make up your money scripts or your beliefs and emotional connection to money. Dr. Brad adds, they get adapted as you go through life by watching other people, your culture, your neighborhood, and your friend group. I want you to answer these questions. Have you ever wondered why you make the purchases you make, whether you needed them or you wanted them? Why do you choose one brand over another? Why did you use credit for the purchase? I want you to get a better understanding of your relationship with money and the motivations that cause you to spend. These factors are emotionally based and stirred by factors like marketing, social relationships, and spending habits. Now, here are two factors that often impact your spending. Keeping up with the Joneses. I am sure you have heard this phrase said over and over and over again, and this is about making purchases based on what the other people are buying. When you're keeping up with the Joneses, you're not living your life, but you're trying to copy theirs. Advertising. Commercials and ads work to compel us to buy things for a variety of reasons. We buy a product because we believe it will improve our lives, make us feel sexier, or increase our social appeal. Advertising is effective. It focuses on our belief that we are less than until we make that purchase. We often make these purchases because without paying attention to the thoughts that run through our minds, spending can also be a response to these marketing messages or some psychological need for control. So how can you further understand the psychology of spending? At its basic definition, spending means paying money for things and experiences. Spending habits are regular practices often done subconsciously and are hard to give up or change. Let's break down the difference between mindfully and habitually spending. Mindfully spending is when you're conscious of how you're spending and where your money is going to. You're aware of your choices and notice the signs of bargain shopping and the lure of the one-day sales. On the other hand, habitual spending is automatic and often without thought. You're spending habitually because you've been programmed to do so. And often with habitual spending, we don't question these purchases because they are ingrained into our everyday life. You see, Spending habits begin early and are influenced by how family and friends handle their own finances. How your parents handled money and the spending habits of your friends can influence your spending on a subconscious level. How do you become more aware of the psychology behind your spending habits? Let's do an exercise. You have a moment. I want you to take a sheet of paper and divide it into two columns. Bear with me. Yep, this is one of those paper two-column deals. I want you to write good in one column and bad on the other. Then I want you to list your spending habits into two categories, the good and the bad. I want you to take time to think about each purchase. This isn't an exercise on shame or blame. The goal is for you to increase your awareness on how you're spending your money. So I want you to list the good and bad spending habits. 
Be as specific as possible. Don't make any judgments as you list your habits. Good habits may be saving for an emergency fund, paying off credit card balances in full each month, carrying no debt, or paying off bills on time each and every month. Bad habits may include borrowing money from family or friends, or keeping credit cards up or to the limit, or maybe even eating out or spending way too much on streaming services. The next step is, I want you to determine the emotion behind the spending. So when you have started listing the things that you spend your money on, I want you to take time to reflect and determine the emotion behind them. It helps you gain a better understanding of your psychology. Figure out what is causing the bad habits to continue and the level of influence it has on the quality of your life. Take the time to really assess the reasons behind the habits. So on that separate sheet of paper, I want you to write down the conditions that cause you to continue the bad money habits and how often those habits cause grief. Determine what you can do to change them. Write down those ideas. This is a brainstorming session. And the third piece is create a plan or process to stop the habit. Here's the thing. Once you've become aware of how you are spending your money, once you become aware of the emotions behind why you are spending your money, it is then easier for you to address those triggers, it is easier for you to address the reason and the root issue of why you have the habits in the first place. And then you can create a plan or you can have mechanisms in place to help you prevent you from spending on things that do not add value in your life. Now, I want you to answer these questions as well as you go through this process. Do you spend money as a form of retail therapy? Do you feel down so you go shopping? Are you socially spending to keep up with your friends and overspending on goods to make you fit in? If the answer is yes to none or all of these, then ask yourself, what can you do to be more aware of when spending habits come up? Could you ask yourself, do I really need to make this purchase today? A simple questioning of the purchases may break the need for you to keep up spending unconsciously. I personally use a system where I ask three questions for each purchase. One, do I need it? Two, do I need it now? And three, what will happen if I don't get it? These three simple questions have helped me and kept me from spending on things that do not matter. So for instance, I may want the new and latest Apple iPad. So I'll ask myself, do I need the iPad? Yes. Then I ask myself the second question, do I need it now? Yes. And then the third question, what will happen if I don't get this iPad? Well, nothing. So through this process, I've realized that I don't need to make this purchase. And often when we are making purchases, we just need these little questions, these little prompts to keep our mind from doing something we otherwise know is not a good deal or fit. Asking these questions is often the pause we need. It may also be a helpful exercise for you to curtail unnecessary spending. Thank you for tuning in. This is Jason Vitug, and you have just listened to Psychology of Spending, How to Spend on Your Values. I really want to thank you for joining me on this journey to turn my frugal blog into an audio show. I hope this is helpful. And a little commentary on this specific article. I met Dr. Brad on social media. I started following him on Twitter and on Instagram as well as TikTok. He is the king of mindset as high. I see him and he creates amazing content. So you definitely want to check out Dr. Broad, Broad, Dr. 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 Brad on social media. He is such a great guy and he has written so many books and he works with high net worth individuals, but he spends and creates a lot of time doing really fun skits on social media to get your attention, to start thinking about your relationship with money. I think that is his biggest premise is 
the importance of understanding our thoughts and our feelings when it comes to money and how we need to shift our mindset in order to become better at it and in order for us to create wealth. For me, I realized when I had these financial issues, I had such a bad relationship with money and I focus on spending and spending was something that I could control. The more I spent, the more I felt like I was in control of my life, in control of my situation. And often when you do make enough money, there is enough cash to spend. And when you don't have enough cash to spend, you rely on credit. And then credit use and continuously use mindlessly will turn into long-term consumer debt. And that debt is a ball and chain. And once you get that ball and chain attached, it is so hard to get rid of. And all of a sudden, instead of flying towards your goals or making those big, bold leaps in your career, your profession, in your relationships, you find yourself stressed. And if you're stressed, I do recommend you listening to how to cope with financial stress, even if you're not stressed, because I think it's important for us to have these coping techniques and mechanisms in place. With that said, again, I want to thank you in joining me on this experiment and turning the Frugal Blog into an audio show. I want you to follow us on social media, on Twitter and Instagram, where we are more active at Frugal, that's P-H-R-O-O-G-A-L. And also, I want you to check out the article if you want to read it and share it with your family and friends. That article is available on frugal.com and also on the show notes. And if you are new to this, make sure you subscribe to this podcast. I do share a new audio. I guess that will that's what we'll use, a new audio. Every Tuesday and Friday, another great article with some commentary. And let me know your thoughts. Reach out to me on social media. I'd love to hear from you. Start connecting and see how we can continue to grow this show. I'm Jason signing out. See you next time. Peace.